evaluate limit of the function 4 minus x square divided by 2 minus x where x approaches 2. Now as a first step we will substitute the approaching value 2 in the function and see what do we get. So if I write 2 for the x then we get 4 minus 2 square which is 4 divided by 2 minus x equals to 2, 2, right? So we get 0 over 0 form. So that is indeterminate form of the quotient, right? Now it indicates that we have a factor x minus 2 in the numerator and also in the denominator. Well this factor we can always see here but not here. It's kind of hidden. But if we factor it out, we'll be able to see. Now, second thing is, it's important to note that this function is not defined at x equals to 2. If you substitute 2 here, we get 2 minus 2 as 0. So we should write that x is not equal to 2. So 2 is not in the domain of the function. Now, to find the limit of such a function, what we will do is we'll adopt this strategy of factoring. As I said, x minus 2 is a factor here in the numerator. So we can factor it out. So let's do that. So we can write this as limit x approaches 2. The function given to us is 4 minus x squared over 2 minus x. Now 4 minus x squared can be written as 4, 4 is 2 squared, right? So we will first write it as 2 square minus x square over 2 minus x. Now this is difference of squares, right? So we can factor it as product of sum and difference. We will limit x approaches 2 and we will factor this as 2 plus x times 2 minus x divided by 2 minus x, correct? Now here you can see this factor 2 minus x. Now this can be cancelled and we can simplify our function. So we get limit, this line should not be there, x approaches 2 and we get 2 minus x. And now we can substitute 2 here and get our answer. This x plus 2, sorry. Because 2 minus x got cancelled, so we are left with 2 plus x. Now we can substitute 2 and get our answer. When we substitute 2, we get 2 plus 2, which is equals to 4. And therefore, our answer is 4, right? Now, to give you a better understanding of this limit, let's sketch this and see how it looks graphically. So we reduced this expression to 2 plus x. So 2 plus x is a line, right, with y-intercept at 2 and slope of 1. So we can say this is our line with slope of 1 and y-intercept of 2, right? And what we are saying, as we approach the value of 2, the function approaches 4, but function is not defined at 2. So it means as you approach this value of 2, function approaches a value which is 4, but it is not defined at this. So there is a hole there. Do you get it? So there is this hole and the function really is a line like this. Correct? So that is the function where x and f of x is our function, right? With a hole at 2. Do you see that? So that is how it is. Why does it have a limit at 2? It may not be defined at 2, but it has a limit at 2. It has a limit at 2 because if you approach from left side, you are approaching a value of 4. And if you approach from the right side, you are again approaching a value of 4. Correct? Therefore, from both the sides, you are approaching a fixed value. And that is the limit of this function. I hope that clears everything. Now to summarize, we have used the technique of factoring to evaluate this limit in which we had an indeterminate quotient form. Correct? Indeterminate means if you plug in zero, if you plug in the value, limiting value, in your function and get zero over zero, then that form is called indeterminate form of quotient. Okay, so in such forms, we can actually 
find a limit. Limit can exist, may not exist, right? So we'll, we can find limit. And the strategy which we used here was factoring. Remember that. So factoring is a very important strategy which can be used in these forms. We'll have some examples on factoring and then we'll introduce you the other techniques. Thank you.